Sherry, all I can say is thank you for being willing to uh, sing that song. It, without a doubt, touched my heart and helped me and encouraged me to be able to get up and preach and take the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, you need uh, you need encouragement to uh, weather any storm that comes in our lives. And I'm very thankful to see each of you in attendance today and here at Bible Baptist Church. And visitors, thank you for being here. I ask you and invite you to open your Bibles. Uh, by the way, we had a, we had a uh, uh, electricity went off right before service. And some of you were here, some of you weren't here. That's why you, you wouldn't know. But every light in the building was off, everything. And, it, and when something like that happens, I've got the A-team back there working on our computer. But there is always any time the electricity actually goes off and comes right back on, it messes with our computer system. So I thank you guys for even being back there and working, and I don't know if it'll be working. It, it, guys, don't, no pressure at all ever I look at them right now. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? It don't matter, Gary. You got it. Yeah, it don't matter who's back. How would you like to be back there? Huh? Carl Alexander, could you go back there and please just work in that booth? You wouldn't want it, would you? Daryl, would you like that? No, I wouldn't want it. Uh, but any time there's a hiccup or something like that, everybody, you know, it'll always is like that. But uh, guys, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, it, it adds to our service and it, and it encourages us. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, you can remain seated, and uh, I just want to read to you three verses. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I'd like to just think about that just for a minute. Here's the review in, in Paul's mind of the Hebrew Christian. And he writes and he says, I want you to think about Everybody that's went before us. Everybody that's went before us that are already there. Now let that just warm you up real good. Because they're waiting on us. They're just there in Christ. Now anybody who was saved prior to leaving planet earth, they're the blessed ones because they're in the presence of Jesus Christ right now. They're occupying heaven. They're in the presence of Jesus Christ. Look at this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What then should be in response to everything he's talked about in Hebrews chapter 11, the great faith hall of famers who already punched the clock and exited life, did their tour duty, they accomplished great and mighty things according to Hebrews chapter 11. That's the great faith hall of fame chapter. I, I don't think I'd ever, I wouldn't even, I, I don't think I'd make a dent in what has happened. These people, they were, they were really phenomenal in what they did, right? That's why they're listed. And Paul listed them. In, I say Paul, I think he was the it doesn't matter, the writer of Hebrews. But, uh, but when he said this, when this writer said this, look at this. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Did you notice it said sin singular? There is a sin he's, he's referencing here. And you need to lay this weight and sin, lay, away, lay aside the weight and the sin, which easily, it does so easily beset us. We, we're all vulnerable, but that, I, I believe that sin, that singular sin he's referencing is the sin of unbelief. In other words, the opposite of faith. Without faith, you cannot what? Please God. This is a faith journey. Every step that we take and every beat of our heart and every, 
our little, our little traverse and journey, our little assignment, where, whatever the boundaries are of our life, while we're here, he said, he said, lay aside the, the weight and the sin. Lay it aside. Now then, now then comes the real meat of why we're left here. Why are we left here? Let us run with what? Patience. You know, this is, an in, this is a marathon, not a sprint. This is, a, this is a, a, an all-out effort. We should be all in. But everybody in the room needs this focus. Everybody in the room needs to be running. This is what the Lord's done in my heart this week. I got a reset. I kind of got a reboot of the hard drive. I kind of got a, a, a I, had to, I had to personally come to a place where I realized what the Lord wanted me to do. And that, that needs to happen to everybody in the room. We just need to be, we need to do soul searching. Search our soul. Search our hearts before the Lord. And so what does he say? Run with patience the race that is set before us. Christians have a race to run. It's life race. It's a race. What, what are we in a, in a race for? Well, I, I'd say we're in a race for uh, the kingdom of Christ. I think we're, we're left here for an eternal purpose. I don't, is there one more thing we have to do in order to enter into heaven? After our salvation, after you've accepted Christ, is there, one, is there anything left to do on our part? The answer is no. It's all done. It's finished. It's complete. The package that you receive from Christ is total and complete. You're as good as there when you trust Christ. Rem remember when you trusted Christ? If you do not have that memory, if you do not have that assurance, today's the day of salvation. I'm sure glad I get to preach about Jesus Christ in this place and tell people about Jesus Christ. Very important, very important that you have that reference in your heart of a new birthday. Amen. Because one birthday isn't enough. One birth date, physical, if all you have is a physical birth date, then you're a candidate for the second birth. And that second birth can be today. <laughs> That's wonderful. It's good news for everybody. But so here's, here's some writing right here to the Christian heart, to the person that's already been saved, and it, and it helps bring into very sharp focus why we're left here after our salvation. Because he calls it a race. Then we're, we're in a race. Let's, let's say this. We're in a race against time, right? Time. Hmm, how much more time you got? <laughs> how much more time do you have? You got it planned out? You think you got it, you got it pretty well in mind? Can I, um, can I talk to you, and Natalie, do you guys, do you think it'd be okay to talk about JW? Because we love that guy. This week, one of our dear brothers, J.W. Freeney, found out he has cancer uh, of the pancreas, pancreatic cancer. Well, do you know that they actually, I, I went and visited him two times and I saw Nat over there, a dear friend of Gala, and, and it's a hard time for the family, but I, I have been so encouraged when I sat down and talked with J.W. Freeney at his hospital bed, the doctors have told him he has six months. Six months. Clock's ticking, isn't it? 
Now the doctor hadn't told you you have six months. But we may all in this room have less than that. Because there, there is another event besides death. And J.W. said this to me. He said, preacher, he says, I still may go up in the rapture. <laughs> I like that guy. I like that confidence. He's still looking for the upper taker instead of the undertaker. He is. Pretty neat attitude, I promise you. Devastating news to hear things like this, but... I promise you, J.W. is solid. And, uh, oh, I loved hearing, hearing him talk about his life. I loved hearing, he, he just, he got to talk about a lot of stuff in his life that he's done. And that's kind of what you do, I think, if you, if you know time is short by uh, reason of uh, what, what you find out about certain things, you know, you're given a diagnosis or something, then you might might have that in your heart, but can I tell you, this is the day. So we're in a race. We're in a race against time. Everybody in this room, everybody in the room, we do not know how much time we have left on this earth, do we? Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Sure don't. Sure don't. So what are, we, what are we doing? We're in a race. Race against time. We're in a race against the gain or loss of men, women, boys, and girls' souls. Now that's really what we've already got ours took care of. How many in this room have already taken care of their eternity. You have trusted Jesus Christ. You have been born again. You're on the launch pad. Say amen. amen. I love to just, just uh, tell the Lord thank you for what he's given me, gifted me. Thank you, Lord. That's what we're to do every day. Live in an attitude of gratitude because our next step may be our final step. We do not know. So... So here's what, here's what he says. You got, you got this race you're in, and you need to have patience. Let that soak in a minute. It sure has with me this week. Uh, everybody in the room, look here. I might be the most impatient guy in the room. Montez pointed at Cabo. Cabo, we're in a tie, okay? We're in a, we're in a tie. And, uh, sometimes that patience, you know, I, I, I don't know if it has to do with, uh, and I'm real young still, okay? I'm, now you ask these guys on this, this, sec, this third pew right here, they're looking at me like, say what? You say you're young? I guarantee you they are. <laughs> they got the rest of their life ahead of them, man. But they, they look at a guy like me and, and hear that and they'll, I was like that. Guys, I was like that. I'd hear somebody say that and I'd go, man, you're just old. <laughs> you, you don't, you, you're losing it or something. You don't realize. And the, and the disconnect on age, you know. But I, can I tell y'all, and you'll remember this the rest of your life, if you get to live to be my age, Okay, which will just be, so you're 18, right? 17, 18 years old, you guys. So to be 60, help me compute this. How many more years you got to live? Huh? 42 more years? 43? Does that even register? I mean, it's hard to even believe you'd live another 43 years. But you plan on doing that, don't you? You really do. You want to, don't you? You want to be here, you want to squeeze all the juice you can out of this life, right? But it seems impossible, 43 more years. 
but can I, and everybody will agree with me that's kind of up around my, the, you know how quick it goes by? How, am I right? How many of you woke up one day and you looked in the mirror and you go, who's that? <laughs> Who are you? Where did time go? It, it really is quite a shock. It, you know, you're, you're living life and man, you're, you're just blazing a trail and, and, and you're, you're enjoying everything about life. And then all of a sudden you look around and you go, uh, it's about over with. <laughs> uh, we're about done with this assignment. This thing's winding down right now. And you kind of get that sense about it, you know. Yeah, the older you get, the faster it goes. How old are you? I'm 60. It does get quicker. Thank you, brother, for your testimony. You are right. What do we do next? What's verse 2? See, this is how we're doing it, verse by verse, line by line, word by word, and it teaches it. The Lord teaching has already, I've already had to preach this, right? To my, the Lord preached it to me, but he says, he says in verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Say that. Looking unto unto Jesus. Say it one more time. Looking unto Jesus. There's verse 2. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. See, that, that becomes what really is important. The word, th this phrase, looking unto Jesus, is really, if I could say it like this, Looking away from all else. Do we get a little cluttered in our... Do we get a little... Do, do you think life on planet Earth kind of... We lose some focus? Huh? Do you think it's easy to lose focus? Just, just kind of take... How many of you? It's easy to get your eyes... Now his eyes always... Wait a minute... Psalm 23, 1 through 6. Have we got that? Psalm 23, 1. Okay, that's okay. Psalm 20, because all of it blanked off. All of the verses we had inputted. But if they can get it up, that's okay. If not, let's, uh, okay. <laughs> They're going to try. But Psalm 23, 1 through 6. I can, here we go. You know what? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> let's start with the Lord is my shepherd. Thank you, guys. The Lord is my shepherd. He's got his eye on his sheep. Bah, bah, bah. Let's do it. Let's, I never had you do this. Everybody do, do a sheep imitation. Let's go. Come on. We got one chance. Bah. I've never had you. This is the first time in 33 years. I'm having fun. You want to do it again? Bah. <laughs> Kids are loving it. Kaysen's happy. All the kids got to do it. Grandma and Grandpa got to do it with grandkids. Yeah. All right. So the Lord is our, my shepherd. It's personal. The shepherd has his eyes on us. All the, do you think there's ever a moment that he takes his eyes off of us? Huh? Do you think there's a moment that he's ever taken his eyes off of you? Not one time. The Lord's never had a misstep. The nor, the, 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 our shepherd never has tr uh, treated us bad. Hello? Has he ever mistreated us? The shepherd. Our shepherd. My shepherd. Your shepherd. Has he ever mistreated us? No. He's too good. Can you go to that verse 2? I don't know if it's... Okay, good. He maketh me to lie down in what? Green path. He provides the best. Oh, listen. Let me brag on our shepherd. Let me brag on our shepherd. He has the best for his sheep. Can you imagine? Green. Now, sheep probably don't appreciate as much as they should the pasture that they have, green pasture. By the way, there's water there. 
Huh? There's water. He provides everything. He gives everything that we need to us. And, and notice what else he does. He says, he maketh me to lie down. Now, if a sheep is going to lie down, that means it must be, they've got it pretty good. And he's taking care of them. And they've eaten and they've got that, and, and he, they've got still water. That, that water is, is just as, I, yeah, it's just pure and just, and he's got it available 24-7, green pastures and water. What, boy, why gripe as a sheep? We've got the best. Anybody, anybody got a complaint about our shepherd? Well, I'd, like, I'd like to say this. <laughs> really? No, I don't. You don't. There's no way. Verse 3, he restores my soul. Man, you talk about help. <laughs> this is helping me. I, you know, I don't know if everybody else is getting a blessing, but I'm getting one just reading it. It's sure helping me. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of what? He's leading. The shepherd's leading in paths of righteousness. He don't lead us in bad places. He leads us in righteousness. And, and by the way, it's for his name's sake. His name's on the line. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Going to happen. I will what? I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to fear any evil. I've got the great shepherd with me, for thou art with me, with me, with me, with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou, he feeds me so well, spiritually, thou anoint, and physically. <laughs> Thou anointest my head with what? Oil. My, everybody say this, my cup runneth over. Is your cup running over? Huh? Can you add it all up and say, thank you, Lord. You, you've sure provided well for me. And then can we, can we go to verse 6 and look at this? This is what's great. This is what's great. Everybody read it. Everybody look at it. Surely goodness and mercy shall what? I, I like saying it like this. I read it out of John Phillips' commentary one time. Dogging our trail all of our journey in our life. Dogging our trail. The two sure footmen of God. Look at it. Goodness, that's grace. And what? Mercy. Goodness and mercy shall what? Follow me. Where did where'd you go? Where, where are you going? He, well, look behind you. <laughs> Goodness and mercy shall follow me. How many days? All the days. And then guess how all this ends up? Guess how it all ends up? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord how long? Put up all the... Do you have points? You don't have points. You got them. Put them all up. So in Hebrew, go back to, go, go back to Hebrews chapter 12. Connect the dots. We look at who Jesus is in just simply our title is looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. So we, we look who Jesus is. Those four points, if you can go back with them. We look who Jesus is. We look at what Jesus did. We look why Jesus did it. And we look where Jesus is. It's right here in these verses. Who is Jesus? <laughs> He's the shepherd. He's the savior. He's the lover of our soul. He's the bishop and, and he's the one who has paid for our sin and, and, and that's who he is. And so he says, fill your thoughts, all the junk and the crowding out and losing focus. He said, he said, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Did you get that? The author, the originator of our faith. Where did all of this come from? Why do we get to enjoy salvation and faith in Christ? Why do we get to do this? Huh? Why, why, why have a better life because of Jesus? How, how does all that happen? Well, it's because of who Jesus is. 
He's the Savior. He's, 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 the, he's already completed the task of the cross. It's done, finished, in, taken care of. It's in full. That's why, we, that's, why, that's why John Newton wrote, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But was blind, but now I see. So we fill our, we fill our thoughts with his person, who he is. We, we fill our thoughts with his position. We fill our thoughts with his passion. We put everything about Christ, his person, his position, his passion, and let that translate into our life. I promise you, it's going to be a better day on planet Earth. Anybody ever had any bad days here? Anybody ever had a, have a bad day on planet Earth? I'm sure you have. But what helps? No matter what you're going through, what helps? Or Better yet, who helps? Our shepherd has his eye on us. He's, he's watching. Look what Jesus did. He went to the cross. He paid for the debt of our sin. He's the originator of our faith. He went, he went the distance. Look why Jesus did it. He did it. Why? Uh, uh, according to verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy. He did it for the joy that was set before him. Do you think going to the cross in and of itself was joy for Christ? He said, he said, who for the joy that was set before him. I think it was the entire, the entire, the entirety of what he did. In the fact that he went to the cross, but he also finished the work of the cross. And is seated by the right hand of God the Father. You see, it's the total picture that he's painting for us here. It's not, yes, there's one part of it that, how could, but, but you see, it's the total work that is encompassed in the work of Christ from beginning to end. And by the way, it's not over with yet. He still has his eye on it. See, it's an ongoing, it's a, it's a forever deal. <laughs> it's, just that, it's just that I have that assurance today through his word of what he has done, accomplished, and finished. And now he's, he could either come and get me by the will of the Father, and I could experience the rapture, or I could, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, the clock is ticking for old Kim Hayes just like it is for everybody in the room. We're going to have to leave this earth one day. Our mortality, uh, this, is, this isn't going to last forever. We, we, we know that, don't we? We're pretty, we're pretty uh, temporary. This is called temp help right here. We're, we're just kind of temporarily helping. And uh, if, we, if we can just point people to Jesus and, and try to make a hand here, I, I don't think, I'm looking around the room, I don't think we've got a perfect person in here, do we? I don't think we've got everybody, I don't think anybody in the room. And by the way, the guy standing up here sure isn't. There's going to be some missteps and mistakes and hiccups and different things that will happen. You're going to have to put up with me. I'm going to put up with you. I didn't hear an amen. <laughs> I heard some old me's. But we do. We just, kind of, we just kind of have to. We just kind of have to keep our, but to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ is what, our, is, what, is what we need to do. He says, focus on me. Focus on Jesus Christ. And by the way, as it is completed, this word picture, he says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Endured. That's what he did. He endured the cross, despising the shame of the cross. Folks, he was crucified naked before the world. The shame of the cross. But now, where is he? Where is he? Where is Jesus? He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Right now, Jesus Christ is seated by the Father. Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, if you can go there. Look at this. Which also said, 
you men of Galilee, the angel, the angel, when, when Jesus ascended up to be with the right hand, at the right hand of God the Father, he said, the, the angels told those uh, disciples, apostles that were gathered there and watched his ascension, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Can you imagine the slack jaw and the, <laughs> uh, they just watched Jesus leave them. Why stand? Why stand you here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. He's coming back just like he left. He's coming back. That's a promise. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, uh, chapter 1 and verse 9. I, John. Now let's get this, let's get this thought from John in Revelation. I, John, who also am your brother. See, that's the relationship we have, brothers and sisters in Christ on our way to heaven together. Amen. He said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. These are the words of Jesus. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto uh, the rest of the churches. <laughs> I get to depending on that and don't turn in my own Bible. I, uh, and uh, that's okay. It's good. All right, here we go. Uh, back, back up. I think, uh, uh, okay, anyway, I don't know what to do. Say. All the other churches. It's okay. The point being, he said, I turned to see the voice. He saw the seven. He saw all the churches in Asia Minor. And guys, listen. What's, what's important is, do you see Jesus? Are you looking at Jesus? Are you looking at Something distracting you? Something taking away your focus? Would you bow your heads just for a moment? Our, our time is... is uh, I feel like that we, we just need time together. But there's a need in this room. Hearts are before the Lord. And you're here today. And you need a fresh look at Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me, please? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you and I ask you and I pray that, Lord, you'd get control of this service and this time. And just bless as only you can this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. With our heads bowed, Brother Sean, would you just pray, please, just pray. Would you just sing while he... We'll pray. We're going to, we're going to pray together today. If you feel the need and sense the need to come, would you do that, please? For salvation, we'll take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. For whatever the Lord's dealing in your heart about. Sean, would you say I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. My blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender all. To Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust. Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I 
surrender all, all to Jesus I surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasures all forsaken take me Jesus take me now I surrender My blessed Savior, I surrender all. Could I ask if, if you would, I'd like my staff to come and stand with me. I'd like my staff and their wives to come and stand. You may be seated. I'm so happy. You guys just stay there for a minute. They look good up there, don't they? You don't mind all. comes today. Tracy, stand with me, please. And it's, I'm so glad. She's been coming a couple of months to our church. How about that? And she uh, wants to join our church by statement of faith. She, there's membership down in a Baptist church in uh, Mississippi, but she said, I'll, I'll, I gave her an option of just joining this morning by statement. She said, that'd be fine. So those willing, she has been saved and baptized and baptized. Those willing to receive her in the membership, uplifted right hand. Good, hearty, amen. amen. Give her a hand, amen. amen. Welcome. Thank you. you may be seated. Okay. Where's your wife? Come on. Howie helps with our media, and we he's part of us. Get over here. I asked them to come up. With... Uh, We, we, uh, we need your prayers. That's all I can ask is for our church family to pray and stand with us. We want to do God's will here at Bible Baptist Church. We have recently, in the last two or three weeks, guys, we went through some things that have gotten public it's just personal personnel and personal matters, but things began to... I think the devil wanted some fuel, so he got it. And I want you to know I, I have been part of, and I apologize to my church family first, the Lord first, my wife and family, and I apologize to Sean and Susan and... Dave and Pam and all the staff because sometimes even the leadership I may give is faulted or flawed. Ultimately, I want to continue to be your pastor 
I did on Thursday of this week offer my resignation if that would help the situation. And it was pushed back in my face by your trustees and deacons. We had a deacons and trustees meeting on uh, this week. And uh, I just went through a personal uh, time in my heart and life to know, and it was, it was not uh, something that I had, uh, it was just a reaction. But my men, guys, you're gold to me. And your words of wisdom, I, there's men in this church that I went to and were part of a conversation with me to, to just simply bring me into some good focus. And I want to publicly tell you thank you for that. But, um, you know, every once in a while we need a little stirring around this place. And I, I didn't want to create it. But what I want is the Lord to get the glory for what man sometimes gets in the way of what God's trying to I don't know if, I, if I'm saying it exactly right, but I just know that I want God to ultimately get all the glory. And the message that I preached this morning was in my heart. And it was mainly for me. Mainly for me. Looking unto Jesus. Can I tell you right now, all the music is a compliment. I love everybody that's involved in our music program. I'm going to ask you, will there ever be a time on planet Earth that it will be perfect? No, it, it just won't be. <laughs> but I want you to know our hearts are here. I am resolved to be a part of this church family. And all I ask for your, for your forgiveness and for your understanding and your prayers at this time. Uh, I, I just love these people immensely. I can't, I don't want to do ministry without any of them. I just don't want to do ministry without them. And I'm, I'm honest about this in my heart and they know it. It has brought us closer together. And I want you to know that that's where we're at today. And so thank you for letting your preacher talk to you honestly and openly. Uh, and uh, please... Pray for us. Pray for me. And, and this lady right here has had to endure me coming home. And, and uh, you know, it just takes its toll in, in a three-week time period. But I love each of you, and I just want you to know that we're, we're going to stand together. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dave, Dave, would you... Uh, would you lead us in dismissal prayer? If you want to come up and talk to uh, us and, and just uh, do whatever you want to do. But Dave, thank you. And I love Dave Brinkman and his steady hand and help in this time. So. That's all.